Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. Now that Simu 121.2 is released to everyone in the public, this is my full and complete setup guide that's going to show you how to do absolutely everything you need to get the best possible performance and usability out of this awesome emulator. As usual, anything you require for this guide can be found in download links down in the description and if you have any questions about anything shown, don't be afraid to ask me down below in the comment section. Now that all of that's out of the way, let's jump straight across to my desktop and get this setup guide started. As I said, everything you require for this guide can be found down in the description. You will require this CMU version, CMU hook, better joy for CMU if you're using a Pro Controller or Joy-Cons, DS4 Windows if you're using a DualShock 4 controller, and if you want to upgrade from an older CMU version, I would highly advise doing a fresh install. This is going to guarantee you the best possible performance on this emulator. First, you want to right click on your CMU zip file and select Extract to CMU 121.2. Next, let's drag it to the center of our window and open it. Then you want to drag and drop your zip file for CMU hook here. Using 7-zip again, select Extract here. This gives you the DLLs required for CMU hook. Please make sure to install these correctly. Once you have it installed, you can delete the zip files both for CMU hook and CMU. Next, what you're going to do is right click on your CMU.exe, select properties, then come to compatibility. From here, you want to run this program as administrator, disable full screen optimizations, and coming into this high DPI settings area, you want to make sure both of these tick boxes are selected, scaling this application by system. Click OK once you've done this, then click the apply button. We're now done with compatibility settings for Windows. Next, we're going to double click CMU and it's going to open. This is going to bring up the Getting Started Guide. This allows you to easily set up an MLC folder and also set up your game paths. The first thing we need to do is set our custom MLC path. You can see mine got auto set from an older version. If you don't have an MLC01 folder, make sure that you create one on the largest drive you have on your system. It is into this MLC folder that we're going to be adding all of our updates, DLCs, game saves, and every single other file that this emulator requires. If you've previously used an MLC folder, make sure to select it correctly. Next, we're going to set up our game paths. Again, click browse, then navigate to wherever on your computer your Wii U games are stored. Highlight that folder that contains the games, select it. Next, we're going to be downloading our community graphics packs. Simply click this button, it's going to download them, extract them, and they're going to be added for our utilization a little bit later on in the guide. Once you've all this done, click next, and the only thing you really need to activate in this window is the automatically check for update options, which you can find on the bottom left right here. Again, make sure this always says don't show this again. Next click close. We're now done with our primary setup of file directories. The next thing you want to do is download the shared fonts provided by CMU Hook. Simply click download now. It's going to download, extract and install these fonts for use in games that require them like Smash Bros. Next, we're going to set up our input devices, click options, come to input settings, then you're going to need to open whichever application or connect whichever controller it is you use for your controller. I'm going to be using a DS4 Windows with my PlayStation 4 controller. You need to make sure to come to settings and enable this UDP server. Once your controller is connected, come back to CMU's input window. Make sure you select Wii U Gamepad. Under controller API, you want to select X input. Then for your controller, you simply select it from this drop down list. Next, I'm just going to quickly map and set up my controls. If you have any issues knowing which buttons map to which, just simply Google what a Wii U gamepad looks like, then map to match your own specific controller. This blow mic button, I always set it to the F key on my keyboard, and if you wish to turn on rumble on your controller, you can do so in this additional settings section. Make sure you don't touch button threshold. Once you have all this set up, you need to assign a profile name. I'm going to just call this DS41, click save, then this is going to appear in my drop down list to be loaded at any time. For any games you are going to be playing in co-op multiplayer, you need to make sure the first controller is set to Wii U gamepad, then any additional controller is set to the Wii U Pro controller. Just make sure the first pad is set to gamepad, then every additional controller is set to Pro controller, map them as you previously did and you'll have no issues whatsoever with local co-op. Since we're now done with input, let's close this window. On the topic of input, we also have motion input. If you installed CMU hook as I showed earlier, and you enable the UDP server on your control pad, this should show up exactly like so. 
you need to follow exactly as I've done, enabling a UDP server within a DS4 Windows. If you're using a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller or Joy-Cons, you can use a better joy for CMU. All you need to do is launch that application, then when it opens, you're going to be syncing your controllers to your computer via wired or Bluetooth, then you're going to click this little arrow button on the side of Better Joy. From here, you need to enable a motion server and make sure the port and IPs are matching perfectly to what I've shown here. Please make sure this motion server is activated, then you want to click Apply. Once Better Joy reopens, you then want to come back to CMU's Option section, come to Gamepad Motion Source and set it to DSU1 and Buy Slot. Once you've done this, you're going to have perfectly working motion controls in any games that support them on CMU. Now that we have our input and motion set up, we're going to go over some game specific settings. You can see when you right click a game, you have a lot of different options. I'm going to go over every single one of these. For example, if you right click and select favorite, you can add some of your favorite games to the very top of your games list, giving you quick and easy access to the games you play most on the emulator. It is very important that for any of these games, you install their latest updates and DLCs. To do this, you come to file, Select Install Game Update or DLC, then navigate to wherever on your computer you have the game's updates or DLCs. Mine are here in this update folder, you can see here's Breath of the Wild V208. To install it, you need to come to this meta folder, select this meta or meta.xml file, then that is going to install it on the emulator. As you can see here, I already have mine installed, so I'm going to click No to reinstalling it. To add a DLC to a game, you do the exact same thing, click File, Install, update or DLC, then navigate to wherever on your computer the DLC is. Again, come to meta, select the meta or meta.xml file. This, as before, is going to install the DLC for any of your specific games. For Breath of the Wild specifically, you absolutely are required to install both of these. The game just will not work without them. As I said, there are a lot of advanced options in these right-click menus. However, before we go over them, I'm going to go over some general settings for the emulator itself. Come to Options, Settings, then the only thing I'm going to disable in this first window is Discord, Rich Presence, everything else should be left the same. Coming to our Graphics tab, since Vulkan has received a ton of new optimizations in past months, I'm going to recommend that people try it out since you get awesome performance in tons of games on this emulator with it now. If you get any screen tearing, you can enable triple buffered or double buffered VSync. Personally, I just leave this at off, but if you get screen tearing, please, please enable it. You want to set upscale filter to a bilinear, a downscale to bilinear, and a full screen scaling at keep aspect ratio. Now, if you have any problems with the Vulkan API, you can always swap back to OpenGL. However, as I said, Vulkan has gotten a lot of improvements recently. Moving on to audio, we're going to swap from direct sound to X audio 2. If you get any choppy or a bad audio in gameplay, you should raise this latency to about 60 milliseconds. However, if your audio is fine, just leave it at 24. For gamepad device, you want to set this to your primary sound driver and make sure to turn it up. Some Wii U games pass audio through the gamepad, so if you don't have this enabled, you're not going to get any sound. Moving on to overlay, this is all pretty self-explanatory. If you want to have an FPS overlay, let's say in your top right hand corner, you just enable FPS, top right, and then you can set its color, set its scale, and whatever you want pretty much to whatever custom factors you wish in this window. The exact same thing can be said for the notifications. This is going to show up in the top left by default. This is going to show you when your shaders are being compiled, when friends come online if you're using the online mode, and what controller profiles you're using. Coming to our account section, you start off with one account by default. If you want to create additionals, just press create. Enter the name of the me account you want. I'm just going to enter bsod2. There you can see it added my second account. If you wish to remove either of these accounts, simply highlight the account you wish to use, then click the delete button. Please note that each of these additional accounts are going to use their own specific and separate save files. In this debug section, you should leave this at disabled, and as long as you have followed all of these settings and steps I've shown thus far, we're now done with the emulator's general settings, you can close the window. Next up, we're going to come to our debug window. Under Experimental, you're going to enable a Vulkan Experimental Asynchronous Shader Compile. This setting dramatically reduces the amount of stutter you get in gameplay when using the Vulkan API. If you wish to use it, please, please make sure to upgrade to your latest GPU driver, otherwise it simply will not work. Once you have this enabled, we can move swiftly along. 
For custom timer, you're not going to change anything here. However, for MM timer accuracy, you want to set this to one millisecond. So don't change anything here and change MM timer to one millisecond. I would also highly advise using Simu Hook H.264. By using this, you're going to get much higher quality videos in games that use H.264 video format like Smash Bros and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, so please make sure to enable it. The final thing you may need to change is your CPU core affinity. This setting changes which cores on your CPU are used most by CMU emulator. Most people should leave this at all logical cores, however for some AMD Zen 1 CPU users you may need to change it to odd or even. Just test and see whichever one gives you the best performance. The next thing we're going to look at is some custom settings in the right click menus. You can see this gives us access to game directory, your game save directory, your update and DLC directory which we previously installed, then our game profiles and graphics packs. First of all we're going to look at graphics packs. If no graphics packs appear, just click this button down here again. For some reason there's a bug that stops these graphics packs from appearing at first in this window. You can see that we have enhancements, graphics, mods and workarounds. Let's start from the top and work our way down. For the best performance you should enable no depth of field, if you want your game to look slightly different color wise, you can enable clarity, then use whichever preset you want. I would advise using the Surfrost default preset. However, if your game appears a little bit too dark at times, you can always disable this clarity option. Moving swiftly on to graphics, we're going to enable resolution and shadow resolution. For resolution, I'm going to change this at first to 1920 by 1080, then we also have control of our shadow resolution. If you have a very powerful CPU and GPU, you can set this to a higher value. Similarly, with resolution, you can also set this from 1920 by 1080 to a higher resolution like 1440p or even 4K. Even if you have a 1080p resolution screen, you are going to get much better graphics by setting this to a higher value, so it's worth experimenting to see what gives you the best possible visuals versus performance. Next up, we're going to move on to our mods, and by far the most important mod to turn on is all four of these FPS++ graphics packs. Under Set FPS Limit, you can see that it is by default set to 60 frames per second, However, there are some instances in Breath of the Wild gameplay where you are going to need to swap this back to 30. For example, if you crash after any cutscenes or during the Van Boris boss fight with Thunderblight Ganon, you need to set this to 30 FPS, then after those events or crashes you can simply swap it back to 60 and resume playing this game at 60 frames per second. Now I want to make this very, very clear. Do not enable this static FPS mod at the same time as FPS++ or your game is going to crash or not function at all. Please make sure to not enable that setting at all. Moving on to workarounds, you can see we have some GPU specific workarounds for OpenGL. So if you're using an AMD GPU, you turn on these graphics packs, then these graphics packs if you're playing on OpenGL. Again, for OpenGL and NVIDIA GPU users, you just enable these four graphics packs. Again, it should be pretty self-explanatory. You only enable the graphics packs that apply to your own specific GPU, then whichever of the two APIs you're going to be using, be it OpenGL or Vulkan. Since I am personally only going to be using a Vulkan with my NVIDIA GPU, I only need to activate this one graphics pack. If you're using an Intel iGPU and Vulkan, make sure to enable both of these. Since I'm not using Intel GPUs, I'm going to disable it. This is the only pack I require. As long as you've followed along, thus far you now have all the best graphics packs for Breath of the Wild. While this game seems very complex in relation to its packs, other games are by far not as complex as this. You can see for Hyrule Warriors we have basic packs like Resolution which allows us again to set our resolution to 1920 by 1080 or whatever we wish. Then we have some mods for 60 FPS, character swapping and increased draw distance. Then again we have some workaround graphics packs, all of which have an explanation in the description section over here on the right. As I said, please only activate the graphics packs that apply to your specific system. Moving along again, we're going to look at game profile settings for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. You see here we have CPU mode, it is by default set to single core recompiler. What you need to do is set this to either dual or triple core depending on the amount of CPU cores and threads your system has. Threaded quantum needs to be set to 100,000 
as I said, please, please make sure to only set this to a value that will work on your own specific system based off the graph you can see on screen right now. In relation to other sections here, while you can apply specific controllers, there is nothing else you need to set once you have a mode and a threaded quantum set you can close this window. Now other games on this emulator do support multi-core recompilers, you should set threaded quantum to 100,000 for every game. However, some games can be a little stable on either dual core or triple core, regardless of how many CPU cores your system has. If you encounter instability on the multi-core recompilers, just set it back to single core recompiler, and all of these games should be very much so stable on CMU. There's no other settings you need to change in either of these windows. Once you have your recompiler and mode set, you can close the window. In relation to optimizations and settings within the emulator itself, we are now done. However, there are some PC optimizations you can apply to greatly improve performance and stability. For example, if you have an NVIDIA GPU, right click your desktop, select Open NVIDIA Control Panel, come to the Adjust Image Settings at the top, select Use the Advanced 3D Settings, then click Take Me There. In Program Settings, you want to click this Add button, then Add Wii U Emulator, this is going to be your latest CMU version, then you want to scroll down to the bottom of this list. You want to turn VSync off. However, as I said earlier, if you get screen tearing, you can turn this on. I personally turn this option off since I do not get screen tearing. You want to turn triple buffering on and threaded optimization on. These two settings only apply if you're using OpenGL with CMU. Scrolling up a little further, you also want to set your OpenGL rendering GPU to your actual NVIDIA GPU, do not set it to system managed, then for power management mode you can set this to either optimal or prefer maximum performance which I prefer to set. Once you've done that, click apply, you're now done with NVIDIA control panel settings. Next you want to right click on your windows icon in the bottom left hand corner and then come to power options. Once the power options window opens, you want to click on advanced power settings. Then once this window opens, you want to set this to either high performance, or if you do not have high performance, set it to balanced power mode. You absolutely do not want this on power saver since it can dramatically reduce the performance being pumped out by your CPU, so please just remember to set this to either balanced or high performance if you have these power plan options. Once you're done here, you can click the X in the top right hand corner, we're now done with power settings. The next thing we want to do is type into our Windows search bar, Control Panel, then Open Control Panel. Once here, you want to come to System and Security, then come to System, then from here you want to click Advanced System Settings. From this Advanced tab, we are again looking for this Performance section right here. Simply click this Settings button, then you're again going to come to Advanced, then inside of this Virtual Memory area, you want to click Change. Once this window opens up, you want to disable automatic management, select custom size here, then set initial size and maximum size to around 10,000. If you followed any Yuzu guides or other emulator guides of mine in the past and have this set to a larger value, don't worry, it's going to work absolutely perfectly if you have it set to a higher value. The reason we're setting this page file is to add stability. Please make sure to restart your system after adding this page file, otherwise it's not going to be properly applied to your system. Once you have all of these steps, settings and optimizations followed, you are now going to have the best possible performance in any game you could possibly want to play on this emulator. As always, if you have any issues whatsoever with anything shown in this guide, be it input, motion controls, game specific settings, literally anything, do not be afraid to leave me a comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can, otherwise contact me over on Discord. For now at least, that's going to be it for this setup guide, that's everything you need for CMU Emulator for the best possible performance. Once again guys, thank you all very much for watching, I greatly appreciate it. Remember to like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.